So I've done individual videos on PF Blocker. I've done a video on Sericata. I've talked about how to set these up inside of PF Sense. And I've talked about segmenting your network. For example, in our case, we have our servers on their own separate network. That way they're locked down and it's easier to look through logs for a single network stream versus all the other noise that gets on the other networks. So when you're trying to focus on security and try to pour through what's going on, you can lock down that network more, tighter, and it's a little bit less noise to punch through when you're doing things like analyzing Sericata. Now, we self-host a few things, and so those are on that separate network and are exposed to the outside world so people can get to them, but obviously we don't want everybody getting to them. So what I want to talk about today is, you know, even though you have all these things and some people uh, may get this false sense of security, which I never want people to have, uh, that you just load PF Blocker and Sericata, and as long as the threat rules are up to date and the GOIP up to date for a block list and the IP reputation lists are up to date, you're good, right? Those are all reactive things. Now they're good, they're good to have. Security is all done in layers, so it's not like they're not a good idea to have. They are just far from an end all solution and we're gonna point out something that was missed here by both Sericata and PF Blocker. And it's because of the way, and I don't know that it's an attack, I just know of the problem it caused and I wanna walk you through like the practical problems we run into, even though we have these things here and how this kind of passed right through them. So, like I said, I have PF Blocker. We block countries we don't really do a lot of business in. We block all the proxy satellites. Uh, basically, you know, all the places you just get a lot of attacks from, Russia, China, so on and so forth, where you see a high volume of attacks. We just block them all with PF Blocker, so those IPs just automatically are blocked. That's fine. Let's move over to Sericata. We have a Snort feed going into it. Uh, Snort is a competing product for Sericata. They both, uh, I'm not gonna get into the merits of each of them, but both of them run off of Snort's feeds, which uh, upstream come from the Talos security group. They're the ones that maintain those feeds. And once again, these feeds are really good, but they're once again reactive. So we try to determine, you know, whether or not these IPs are bad or whether or not the actions as they see them in these signatures, so go, does this, pattern of data coming through match a known signature or look like a signature because there's, you know, common ways people attack. Even though the stream is encrypted, they're looking for kind of like a heuristic approach. They see things much better when you look at a non-encrypted uh, stream, of course, because they can see more about what the data is. But as the internet has become way more encrypted over the last a few years, especially with things like Let's Encrypt, there's less visibility. And especially when you start talking about the QIC protocol, that actually blinds these things even more because it's all a bunch of UDP streams and it's a little bit harder to do any type of heuristics on UDP streams versus the TCP streams that we're looking at right here. So back to the reality of it. And here's a IP that managed to get itself blocked. So uh, 45, 55, 188, 183. We can go over here to Shodan.io, which is the wonderful internet lookup. And we look it up and say, okay, it's a internet scanner hosted over at DigitalOcean. What does it see? Uh, Backbone.js, Google uh, Font API, Gravatar, blah, blah, a few different things that it's seeing running on there. And it says this, I, this IP has been observed scanning the internet source was gray noise. So we look over at Gray Noise. They're one of these companies that's collecting reputations and learning things about the internet by setting up probably a series of honeypots and kind of seeing what comes out there and going, hey, look at these guys are bad. So they're on the bad list. They're not on the PF Blocker list uh, for whatever reason, but they're also a DigitalOcean server. So you don't want to just blanket block everything on DigitalOcean. Um, if you did, you would block our forums, for example, because that's where I'm hosting those. Uh, but my forums aren't scanning. But you kind of get the idea. This is actually within, I believe, close uh, in proximity to where I'm hosting uh, our current forums. And those are hosted external, not inside of our office here in Detroit. But you can see that like, this is all the flow through. Okay, it all stopped. And the only thing we really stopped, someone was from scanning. And scannings aren't necessarily the same as an attack. They're reconnaissance missions. And the reason a lot of people run scanners, they're going to want to go, hey, what is the OS they're running? What firewall is that? Can we make those determinations? Because if they can make that determination of what you're using, the next step is to go, is there an exploit against that particular model or brand? Uh, firewall is, you know, is it a really old one unpatched? And they can then try those attack vectors. So a lot of these noisemakers on the internet that are out there scanning, they're more of reconnaissance and making lists for later attack. That's all fine. 
And like I said, that's the process for that. Now, let's talk about the practical security of a couple things you ran into and how uh, they affected us and how nothing about Sericata uh, helps and nothing about PF Blocker helps. And we had to start manually blocking some of these. So let me show you. And there's a really cool tool. We'll start because everyone asks what tool I'm using for set for things. So Go Access is a really neat command line uh, log analyzer. And I've got my logs in such a way that when I see any problems and I use Zabbix to monitor my servers, if I see a problem, the server's under high load for mystery reasons, um, we can use things like Go Access to go look at that. And I see web server because we're running, uh, we self-host Screen Connect or ConnectWise Control, depending on how you know the product. That's our remote access tool that we do host in-house. So let's go over and take a look at the logs for that. So here's Go Access and uh, it's analyzing the log files, seeing the hits from internal IP addresses and external IP addresses as they go here. So here's actually our Zabbix server, which accounts for this. This person here, I don't know who this is, at 7475772244 is just beating up on my server for some reason. Uh, these are internal IP addresses and things like that. And the cool thing about Go Access is I'll actually open up Screen Connect and refresh it a couple times on my site here. Use, this is my IP address I have highlighted, and you can see it actually updates that. So every time I move around and screen connect and refresh, to me, refresh this again, you see another hit. So you know, internally, these 192 addresses are the internal staff hitting it. Uh, the 122 is Zabbix monitoring it. And this person, I don't know what they're doing, but they're not doing anything that matches any known nefarious signatures, hence the reason Nothing blocks them. So let's go ahead and take a look and see if they're in gray list or one of these other places. So let's go ahead and switch back over to this. Gray noise, I said gray list. Put that IP address in. Search. Not found. Go over here, Shodan. And not found. So that's where things get a little bit trickier. This person's just banging away on my website. They're not doing anything. I've actually, and I'm not going to go through the details of the log raw log file, but um, they're just hitting the website randomly and refreshing the page. They're not even sending any commands. So my guess it's maybe just a curl command running. Uh, it's not sending a header or anything identifying it. So it's kind of unusual when we see these. We, when we see these once in a while, we don't understand why. Because literally they're just refreshing the web page all the time is essentially what's going on there. Now, this person wasn't causing me too much drama. I just happened to open up the log file and see them there. But there has been times in the past where we've actually noticed a server under high load. Zabbix alerted us going, this is higher than usual. And I said, OK, what's going on here? And we pull up the logs and we found some other IP addresses in there. Let's talk about how that works. And this is the practical security of how things go. This is the offending one. I should say the more most offending one. This one was going up to thousands of hits a second. Same thing, no header information, just refreshing the page. I don't really know what their purpose was, but uh, Shodan has very little about them. So we look at here. They're marked as just not bad, but something that Shodan has found. They do have a port 443 open. Let's look at gray noise and see if they have anything on them. Nothing at all. So they've not made any reputation lists that make us like try to block them. So once again, they pass right through unnoticed through Sericata. There's nothing about them on different companies. And there's a ton of different companies that uh, do analysis on these, but Shodan being one of the real big ones at keeping a log of stuff, there's nothing about their reputation to make you think you block them. But they decided to refresh my web server so hard that it caused a blip in it to make me notice them. Now there's rate limiting and things like that. And one of the most important things about security is that we have all of our servers constantly up to date uh, to protect us from any potential vulnerabilities in Apache. We don't hesitate at all. We make sure our servers are auto updating, which comes at the risk, of course, if you're patching every security update as they come out of having a potential uh, go wrong. I know someone's gonna comment on that, but I would rather be secure than insecure. So we make sure all of our patches are loaded all the time and are checked every single day. But this is one of those weird things where people will see an attack and they're like, but why doesn't these other tools do it? And this is where it's really hard to do analysis. So you can really try to make some decisions based on rate limiting, like how much can this one particular IP pull data from that one port, but then it would create a problem for those IPs that are actually pulling data from the port. You don't want to block them. And because they're only refreshing the page, not using the service, they're not pulling as much data as someone using the service. 
but they're weirdly refreshing your page, so you have to focus security down on the Apache and set up uh, the mod rate limits to say this one person can't refresh the page that many times. But you kind of see the overall practical side of how the security works, and it's not really anything that you can easily point your finger at. And you can see how quickly something like this, you know, kind of spirals out of control, if you will, uh, where there's a lot of functions, a lot of things uh, that you can look into. But this is the practical side of security and what we see from not just ours, I'm showing you ours because I can show you this. We see this for clients where they have a publicly exposed server, maybe it's even if it is hosted in the cloud, and we kind of kind of sort out why does this one IP attack it? And then we put in a block for those IPs. And the last thing I'll show you is how you block those people. So these are the only IPs over time that have ever caused this weird issue that wasn't blocked by Sierracata. So there's really not a lot in here. Um, and this IP address was the real bad offender. This one was, these ones were equal. They were all doing it at the same time. Uh, but what you do is I created an alias and it's just called manually blocked IP address. And I said blocked IP address due to attacking. And so we go ahead and throw them in here. And from here, we created a rule. So first you start with the alias, then we're gonna go ahead and create a rule. And that rule starts with the action block. You wanna make sure that you are blocking these people. Where do I block them? Interface WAN. Uh, we don't have IPv6 turned on, so we have it turned to uh, just the IPv4. You can it, change that to both if you have both. Um, protocol. Any, I don't care what protocol they come in on. I can block them, for example, only on uh, TCP and only and filter it down, but I don't. I just block that IP address. I don't, there's nothing about them that I think I need to get to them or they need to get to me, so blocking them is not a problem. Single hoster alias, change it to there, change it to manually blocked IP address. And if you haven't wrote a rule before with an alias, you don't have to remember how it's done. When you start typing, it fills it out for you. Destination, I'm not gonna uh, pull down the whole list here, but what this is as a destination is all the IP addresses. We have a block of IP addresses assigned to our PF sense. I don't care what IP address they originally may have been attacking. I want them to block anything inbound to my firewall because there's nothing of value um, coming in from that person. Nothing I could see anyways. And description, manual block list, simple as that. And I go ahead and log this. I have plenty of storage on my PF Sense box to be able to log a lot. Uh, so I do have this set to log packets that are handled by this rule because you know I can still see if they're uh, going ahead and attacking it still because it can log the blocks from that rule. So like I said, this is the kind of uh, process for the whole thing, like how you go from uh, seeing the rules, what it looks like for the rules in place, and still what the rules miss. So you still always have to be vigilant and sometimes go down to your server level to look at some of those things because PFSense or any firewall can only do so much blocking. Now, there are other methods about uh, that you can go about this. And for example, and when you get to some of the more enterprise level companies, you can put a web application firewall as a go-between. So everything has to pass through the WAF before it gets to the other side of the server. That way there's more analysis going on before it actually addresses your server. Uh, for us, that's just not necessary. Um, it just, as a matter of fact, this is actually hitting a proxy before it passes on to our actual server. So we keep an Apache proxy in front of our screen connect slash connect wise control server. But this is some of the analysis I wanted to walk you through because I had to block this person the other day. There's not many people I've ever had to block. It's rare this happens. I don't know if it's also a result because of YouTube and people going, hey, uh, I, I, you talk about security, so let's poke at your systems. That's gonna happen. Uh, you should always be prepared for that. Uh, and if somebody wants to try denial of service, there's not a lot I can do about some things. And this has happened to other security researchers at different levels. If uh, someone really wants to denial of service you, they can just fling lots of IPs that are not in any bad reputation list and start just pausing up bandwidth because they're not doing anything nefarious other than refreshing a page. But this is kind of that whole thing I wanted to talk about where one, all these things, they're nice, they're all layers, but still these are some of the practical things you have to do after everything passes through those layers, uh, which because there's only a few IPs in there, you can tell it's not being done too often. Um, hopefully this was helpful and you kind of get an idea of either the process, uh, my thought flow of how I get on there, how I found it and how we eventually led to just blocking those addresses. And for those of you wondering, yes, you can block alias and things like that. Um, that's actually what PF Blocker does. Watch my video on that. And I'll leave a link below to the Sierracata video and the PF Blocker video that I did uh, to kind of give you the setup to you know build your security model around uh, PF Sense and setting this up. All right, thanks.
Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up. If you want to see more content from my channel, go ahead and hit subscribe and the bell icon and hopefully YouTube will send you a notice. If you're interested in contracting Lawrence Systems for any type of IT services work or consulting work, go ahead and head over to lawrencesystems.com and fill out our contact and get in touch with us. If you would like to help the channel out in other ways, you can use our affiliate links below in the description, or we have a link directly to our Lawrence Systems page where we have a list of different affiliate offers, and it's very appreciated if you use any of those for signing up any of the services, and many of them offer you discounts. If you want to head over to our forums, there'll be a link in the description for our forums, uh, wherever they may be, because we've been looking at different forum platforms, but they'll always be relevantly linked right there. All right, once again, thanks. Leave some feedback and comments below on this video. If you loved it, if you hated it, I try to reply to everyone, the people who hate and the people who love them. So thank you very much and see you next time.